In this episode, I attempt to fight the Moon Lord, which is basically the last boss of the game. This is done by initially killing these cultists that are standing outside the dungeon. And then the lunatic cultist shows up, and we fight. This is my first time even seeing these monsters, let alone fighting them, so I'm, as I go, I'm just trying to figure out you know, what's effective, how they attack, etc. I've basically got every buff potion that I could think of, because again, I don't know what to expect. And up until this point in the game, this is still a no-deaths run on Expert. I understand now that the cultist essentially alternates among four different kinds of attack. One kind of an attack is sort of melee-ish, that's what those fireballs are. Another is uh, ranged, I think that's what the dark colored fireballs are. A third is considered magic attack. And I think that's um, I think that's what that blue spinning um, ice thing is. And then the final kind of attack is a summons-based attack, which is what this dragon is. I, I think that's the way his, his attacks are, are meant to be understood. Fortunately, this dragon doesn't seem to do much damage. At the bottom of this arena, I've got my heart statue set up for additional healing, but so far I haven't needed to use them. So that's the end of the Lunatic Cultist.
And now as I progress to the right, the screen gets blue. And I, at the time I played this, I had no idea why. And here come these other critters. And after a while, this fight devolved into just these star cells being the only enemies. The way they work is when you kill the big one, three small ones spawn. And if you don't kill the small ones, then they turn into big ones. Um, and the vampire knives, although very good at keeping me healed up through this fight, just don't have enough DPS to actually turn the corner and, and kill these things off. So I, I spent quite a while just, you know, killing these star cells, which fortunately can't go through my uh, wooden planks here. So if, at this point, the, the fight is basically trivial, but I'm not accomplishing anything, or at least it's not apparent if I am. Although I didn't understand it at the time, getting the fight like this is a huge benefit because these star cells, as you can see, are uh, pretty trivial to beat. And the fact that they're on the screen it means that none of the other kinds of enemies, the kinds like I was fighting at the beginning, will spawn. So I can just kill these uh, as long as I want. And what's actually going on, though I didn't understand it at the time, is that there's a kill counter running. And once you kill 150 of these kinds of enemies, then another structure, which hasn't even appeared on the screen yet, uh, will become vulnerable. And so there, at the bottom, it says, I defeated the 150th star cell. So just star cells alone, I've got the kill counter up above 150 now. So... The, the structure, which is a, a monolith, is now vulnerable, but I, I had no idea where it was or that it was relevant, so I just kept killing these things for a while. So after a while, I decided to head to the right, and now I finally caught sight of the monolith. You can see it on my mini-map, although it's not on the screen yet. Okay, so here's the monolith finally, and the pillar, I guess it's called. And so this, I never saw it when it was not vulnerable, because um, I spent all my time killing these uh, star cells. But once you do kill 150 of these enemies, then it's vulnerable like you see it, and you just have to shoot it a bunch of times. finally dies and it dropped some um, stardust uh, I don't know what it's called either but some items that are valuable but you know this, this I didn't know anything about this fight intentionally uh, I didn't realize that was important so I left those behind and then once again I find myself futilely trying to kill these infinite star cells So now I check the map, and I see there's more. There's a vortex pillar. Maybe at that time I only spotted that one. There's a total of four of these pillars initially, and I've killed one of them. So I get on my train car, leave behind all those star cells that I can't kill. And I went
went right over where I had killed the vortex pillar, so I still did pick up the drops from it. So here's the vortex pillar, and I can't damage it. It's got some kind of a force field around it. I never saw the other pillar, although it, it did have a similar thing when I hadn't killed enough of them. So I spent quite a while trying to figure out how I opened that pillar. Alien queen enemies are particularly annoying because their attack causes gravity to stop working and turns out gravity is very important for being able to maneuver as you want to. Like when, when gravity is broken, you your hoverboard doesn't even work properly, so you can't you can't control up or down. So after a while of fighting those guys and not seeming to make any progress, I decided to move away from them to end the fight. Try and regroup and figure out what to do. Right, so here I, I didn't understand what I'm supposed to do, and so I thought I would try a asking the talking to the NPCs and seeing if any of them had any dialogue that would clue me into what I'm supposed to do, and, and none of them do. I went through a bunch of weapons in my inventory, trying them on the pillar, seeing if they would somehow be what was necessary to open it. None of them were. So then I decided to check out one of the other pillars, see if maybe it was vulnerable. And it's not. It does have some different enemies, though, which I needed to figure out how they worked. Some of these guys, when they make contact with you, cause the screen to go mostly dark. And those enemies that are teleporting around are probably the most annoying. Basically they teleport whenever they get hit, so it becomes really tough to get enough damage on any one of them to kill them off. And since that one wasn't uh, vulnerable, I decided to look at the fourth one. And at the fourth pillar, there are these snake enemies that do enormous amounts of damage. I'm already down to two HP. I barely got out of there. So <laughs> it took a moment to regroup. So then I headed back in with this time a full load of buff potions. 
and immediately take almost fatal damage once again from that snake thing, which I didn't seem to do any damage to while it was killing me. And so it seems that I can kill the snake, or at least stay alive, as long as I'm moving fast enough on this rail car. And to actually kill the snake, only its tail, the very end, last segment, is vulnerable. Everything else about it is invulnerable. So it's really hard to get, like, Hard to kill, hard to kill safely, hard to kill quickly. And I still have not been able to catch a glimpse of this pillar here, because I get chased away by the snake every time. Yeah, I can't do anything with a yo-yo to its head. The only thing that works is shooting the tail. So then I went diving in, hoping I could at least see the pillar, and there it is. Immediately the snake chases me away. So I know that the pillar is not vulnerable because I can see its force field, and then that raises the question of what, what am I supposed to do? I've got three pillars, none of them are vulnerable. I went back over to the vortex pillar to see if anything had changed about it, and it did not. Check in on this one too. Same thing. So after spending like an hour trying to figure it out, I eventually gave up and looked on the wiki where I learned I had to kill 150 enemies before the pillar would be vulnerable. So with that knowledge, I went in and attacked the vortex pillar. And after a while, I finally killed enough of them that when I wandered back by the pillar, I found that it didn't have a shield on it anymore. This time I picked up a few of the vortex fragments. Maybe I got them all here. And that's what clued me into the fact that there were drops to be had at the pillars. So afterward I went back and got the the ones from the other from the first pillar that I destroyed. And then it was time to go after the next pillar. Prior to this fight, I used the drops from the Stardust Pillar to create a new summoning item. So the three things that are now helping me are versions of those Stardust cells that I couldn't kill before. And eventually I'd killed enough of them that the shield opened as well.
Before I could kill the fourth pillar, the king slime randomly spawned. And with that out of the way, it was time for the solar pillar. And these annoying snakes. It's easy enough to kill these snakes from the railway, but I know I've got to get 150 kills, and it would take way too long to do that entirely from up here. So I decided to drop in and fight them from the ground. As before, that snake does so much damage, I can only survive two or three hits. So I probably killed 20 of these snakes up on the rail, but again, it's just too slow. So there's really no choice but to go in and try to fight him on the ground. At first I was getting lucky that there wasn't a snake, but here he comes. And what I'm trying to do with the snake is sort of stay inside of his curl if I can and attack his tail. started to get pretty good at killing these snakes. Which unfortunately bred overconfidence. And so he finally killed me which is the first death for this character. Frustrating. So, let's try again.
trying to be extra cautious and get out as soon as I drop below half health. And finally, I did enough damage to open the pillar. And snakes are still the big issue though. So with the pillar dead, there's no need to stick around and keep killing snakes. But the message says something like impending doom. And uh, I already knew from, from the wiki that that means the Moon Lord is going to spawn. So this was the area I'd set up. I had no idea what the fight was going to be like, but I figured maybe an area like where I killed the mechanical bosses would work. I think I went back here just to see if I could grab these drops before the Moon Lord spawns. Yeah. And that was that death. So disappointing. Okay, so the Moon Lord spawns. So, like I say, this is the first time I'm fighting this guy. I've deliberately avoided reading about how he attacks or what strategies to use. So, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I'm just getting attacked from everywhere. Somehow I end up in the water. So I try to teleport away. Almost die. Just barely managed to get myself healed. I'm trying to get back on the rail car so I can escape not get my NPCs killed. And so that beam seems to be what's doing the most damage. And he's also got these lasers that I'm trying to dodge unsuccessfully. Let's 
so I got back to my arena. That way I can go back and forth with these statues and get health. And there, I took like 200 health. I'm moving back and forth because I thought maybe that would help dodge these attacks. I'm trying to use the vampire knives to heal myself, but they don't seem to be doing anything. having any luck dodging that beam attack either. One of the issues I'm facing throughout this battle is that there's so much chaos on the screen that I just cannot find my mouse cursor. It's this tiny red arrow that's so easily lost in amongst all the other graphics. And there's no option in the game to make it bigger or brighter. So that was just a really unnecessary difficulty here. It does appear that I'm making progress here. The, there's an eye on the left, an eye on the right, and an eye up top. And both of them are, all of them are down to half health or less. And I'm basically now just running back and forth between my statues, hoping that the amount of health I get from the statues is enough to compensate for all the damage I'm taking. With those beam attacks, it's it's not. I keep hoping the vampire knives will heal me back up, but they're not they're not doing anything. So with that one I decided to try to get health from the nurse, which worked. Just trying to get off the rail again so I can get back to my arena. Which is extremely difficult given how hard it is to find my mouse cursor. And I'm already down to half health. eyes don't take any damage if you attack them while they're closed, but in all this chaos it's really tough to keep track of which one's open, which one's closed. They open and close pretty quickly. So I've killed the eye on the left, but that spawned a new enemy called the True Eye of Cthulhu, which is invincible and has its own beam attack among other attacks. So I'm really just getting hammered now. Just to get back and heal from the nurse one more time. But 
already down to less than half health once again. Finally got me a phantasmal sphere is what the true eye of one of the attacks of the true eye of Cthulhu. So the first attempt was a failure. Once you die, the Moon Lord despawns and those cultists return, so if you want to fight him again, you've got to go through the entire sequence of clearing the four pillars. So, I will do that on a subsequent episode. 